All right, Shalom Israel, uh, Shalom Yisrael. Sorry, um, <clears throat> got it cut off all of a sudden. Um, damn tablet just decides uh, how long it wants to record. It's always random, so I never know. So sorry for the brief cutoffs, but you know, just happens. But we finished getting uh, Synagogue Satan, the protocols that they were the serpent people. Now we're going to hit up Masonic and Cult Symbols Illustrated, Kathy Burns. Um, jump right in it, page 18 and 19. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. Oh, yeah. hold on. Let's get, let's get the pen. Point a pen. Let's see. What do we got? Uh, this damn book, man. It's so uh, so difficult. It's like really thick. The way they binded it and stuff, it just uh, doesn't work. But anyways, we're gonna try to get the serpent's head and neck is distinctly a masculine symbol, but the serpent is sometimes symbolized with its tail in its mouth, Ouroboros. The body forming a circle which is feminine. Also, the mouth is feminine, while the tail which, uh, which is in the mouth is masculine. Thus, for two good reasons, the serpent with its tail in its mouth represents both sexes. So, you know, it's just your, your sex again, man. It's your sex worship. It's just the tail in the mouth is, is the, dick in the dick in the vagina. Uh, the sacred fire. Sacred fire, right? The Kundalini fire was often prepared on religious occasions by uh, rotating a, a realistic wooden representation of the phallus in a wooden representation of the ktais. Rotating being done by an apparatus resembling a bow. So basically, they would get a wooden penis and a wooden vagina, and they would uh, put them together and rotate them over this fire. They would burn a penis and vagina. This is this is the kind of whack shit that the these pagans are doing. The cornucopia or horn of plenty was double sexed in symbolism. The horn was masculine and the inside was feminine. The fruit inside symbolized the productiveness of the female. So, you know, that's the eggs of the female. So-called, you know, eggs, uh, you know. Um, man, this is, this is awful. See, this is what your snake shit is, man. That's what that is. Ashtaroth and Asherah. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, we got a lot to get. Let's get 99, page 99. Uh, so, you know, you know what it is already, man. It's nothing but sex rituals with these, with these dudes. It's nothing but perversion. Um, you know. Oh, okay, here we go. It's just the Kundalini. Uh, we know what that is. We know snake shit. Um, let's get, sorry, let's get 122 now. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check out my Kundalini breakdown. You know what it is. The Kundalini's, uh, wrapped up right in this, man. So, uh, you know, like I said, if you have any questions, go back check it out okay so but i wanted to get this so here's this phoenix right it says uh okay here we go the phoenix because the phoenix um is just a feathered serpent you know Watch here. Look, the phoenix symbol is important to an in, in another way. As an emblem among nearly all civilized nations of royalty, power, superiority, and immortality. The phoenix of China is identical with the meaning of the phoenix in each of Egypt. And the phoenix of the Greeks is the same as the thunderbird of the American Indians. So, you know, our brothers over here in the Americas, so-called natives, um, fell back into that worship. You know, this is why the, the so-called conquistadores, which were just Am Amalekites, uh, came and put their foot in our ass. Yet in another book by Hall, Manly P. Hall, we find farther south in the Thunderbird symbol merged with the Quetzal of the serpent feathered and the serpent feathered with Quetzal plumes. The Quetzal was identical in meaning with the Phoenix of Asia, North Africa, and the Near East. The feathered serpent symbolism can be traced back to the hooded Nagas or serpent gods of India, uh, which is N Nagas is just Nakash, you know? And to the winged serpents, which occur in the writings of the sculpture and the sculpturings of the Egyptians. So, see, there's these winged serpents, these, the, the, the Sharafyam, you know? Remember? The Sharafs, the Sharafyam? Uh, if not, go back to the lesson, uh, the one prior uh, to get to get that. Uh, hold on. Sorry, Israel. This, this damn book. Um... Uh, Hold on, I'm trying to get it as best as I can so you can see it. 
The phoenix is also the ancient symbol of human aspiration toward the universal good. Remember, that's the, the universal good to them is Satan. Barbara Walker, a radical feminist, reveals that the Egyptians and Phoenicians believed that the phoenix was the representation of a god who, quote, rose to the heavens in the form of a morning star like Lucifer after his fire immolation and death and rebirth. So it's your Jesus, man. Your phoenix is just your, your, your Jesus. Your, your Jesus, the, the, the idol that the damn nations made. It says, one former witch explains the phoenix, or Bennu, is believed to be the divine bird going back to Egypt. This phoenix destroys itself in flames and then rises from the ashes. Most occultists believe that the phoenix is a symbol of Lucifer, Esau, who was cast down in flames and who, they think, will one day rise triumphant. This, of course, also relates to the raising of Hiram a beef, or Kyram a beef, which I touched on a little bit, and the Masonic Christ. So see, this is all the same. It's all the same person, man. It's the Morning Star. It's the Lucifer. It's the the, the Esau. The the and his and his angel, Satan. With the continual rebirth of the Phoenix, it becomes a symbol of reincarnation and eternity. E. A. Wallace Budge writes, "The Morning Star was the fa the ferryman of Osiris, or the soul of Osiris." So see, that's Esau is the soul of 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 Osiris of of the Satan i.e. the Bennu, the bird, which the Greeks identified with the phoenix, the sun god who supposedly created all the other gods, was also pictured in the form of a phoenix. Look, one of the symbols of the 32nd degree of masonry is a triangle on which a raven, a dove, and a phoenix are displayed. The eagle also, the bird of, of, of Hove or Jove, is frequently identified with the phoenix. As is well known, the eagle is used extensively in masonry. In a Masonic Bible was the question, what is the symbolism of the eagle? So see, the eagle is identical with the phoenix. So, and who's the eagle? The eagle is Esau. The phoenix is Esau. The, all this is Esau. The, Am the Amalekites, man. What is the symbolism in the eagle of the eagle in Freemasonry? The answer was given. The eagle has been a symbol among the different peoples of the world from their time immemorial. In Egypt, Greece, and Persia, it was the sacred to the sun. Among the pagans, it was the emblem of Jupiter. Among the Druids, it was the symbol of their supreme god. This is why they rock it, because they are the god. They, rep they exalt themselves as that god, as that eagle god. The phoenix, if you want to call it that. It's the same shit. But that's, you know, the eagle is another lesson. The eagle is another breakdown. Um, but let's get, let's get some more on this serpent. Oh, okay, so you know what it is. More Kundi, more Kundi stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see, what can we get? I'm just trying to cut it, you know, I, I already touched on that, so I don't think we needed to get that again. 151, though. Let's go to page 151. Here we go. This is some good stuff. Oh, sorry. Um, alright. That the serpents were ever... Hold on, let me see. Oh, it's Blavatsky. So we got there. Blavatsky. Blavatsky remarks. So this is... Um, let me see. Make sure. Okay, cool. We're good. Okay, Blavatsky re remarks. What is she... I, hold on. Ugh. This damn book. That the serpents were ever the emblem of wisdom and prudence is again shown by the Kedgesis of Mercury. The two serpents entwined around the rod are phallic symbols of Jupiter and the other gods who transform themselves into snakes for purposes of seducing goddesses. See, this is... <sighs> this is why it's, it wasn't a ser It was Satan, man. It was the serpent. It was the Satan. It's symbolic, man. They, they, it was the Nakash. He was a uh, an enchanter, a diviner. He seduced. He he tricked uh, Eve into to receiving that knowledge of the evil. He did, it's just a phallic symbol, man. He's your phallic god. You know, the emblem of wisdom. They call him wise. He was the wisest, what was it? The wisest, the most cunning of all the beasts of the field, right? Of all the creatures that were made. The serpent has ever been the symbol of the adept, and is, you know, the which is your masons, your high-level masons, 
the Illuminati, and of this powers of immortality, and of his powers of immortality and divine knowledge. It shows the dual power of the secret wisdom, the black and white magic. Yeah, with your five pointed star. This is what it is, man. It's the serpent. It's the emblem of the adept, the penis, the, the one that seduced Eve. You know? Uh, let's see, what else we got? 52, 153. Hold on, let's see. Oh, yeah, here we go. In fact, so, you know, since we're talking about this, um, oh, man. Sometimes these books, man. Um, our Masonic book, after explaining about the Kedjasi's brags, the rod of the master of ceremonies is an, an analog, equivalent or parallel. Uh, another Masonic book claims that the, the Mercurius uh, Caducifer, or Mercury, the bearer of the herald's staff, finds his analog in a Mason's lodge. In the senior deacon who accompanies the initiate throughout the ceremonies and assists at his restoration, although himself unable to restore life. The Kedjesis is also a symbol of immortality, of course. Mercury is not the only god who carries the Kedjesis, Pike, Pike indicates. So it's these Mercury's, these deacons, uh, rock this this Kedjesis, uh when they help everybody go through their ceremonies. You know, so ask their masons, you know, who was your little deacon that helped you through everything? But anyways, uh, Pike says that this was also born by Sibyl, Kybel, Minerva, Anubis, Hercules, Ogmius, the god of the Celts, and personify and the personified constellation Virgo was a winged wand entwined by two serpents. So, you know, Virgo. The migration of symbols reveals that the Kedjesis has alternately been considered to be an equivalent of the thunderbolt, which is your phallic symbol, a form of the sacred tree and con contraction of the scarab, a combination of the solar globe and the crescent of the moon, crescent moon that they worship, and so forth. Another symbol, so it's all the same god. Another symbol using wings is called the winged globe or solar globe. So then they start going off into the solar globe, uh, you know. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we can get, which is, you know, it's the triune deity, you know, check it out. I'll, I'll, we'll touch on it now, but let's just get the, the wing globe and the serpent. So the wing globe and the serpent together, right? They symbolize the, the, the Egyptian, um, triune deity. It's the triple God, you know, serpent, uh, uh, it's that, that triple God head, man. Look. Egypt was the great conservator of ancient idolatry. Uh, uh, you know, so that's why they love Kemet so much, right? Knef was the serpent god of this people. He was the second person of the sacred triad and said to be the creator of the world. He was usually represented by a hooded snake, sometimes called Bas uh, Basiliscus, or the royal serpent. Did he, which is what they call the serpent in Harry Potter, man, the Basilisk. You know, all these things are linked. The serpent. Did he, the worshiper, meditate on the mysterious triune deity, Aikdon Knefta? He was presented to the worshippers uh, uh, a recollection of by the figures of a globe and a winged serpent. The globe symbolized the supreme and eternal God, the serpent, the animating principle, and the wings, the hovering spirit of God, which moved on the face of the waters at the creation of the world. So see, this is what this is what they worship, man. Pike remarks, Serpents encircling rings and globes and in issuing from globes are common in the Persian, Egyptian, Chinese, and Indian monuments. Vishnu is represented re, uh, reposing on a coiled serpent whose folds from a canopy over him. That's, you know, the, 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 the serpent power, the Kumalini. Mahadeva is represented with a snake around his neck, one around his hair, and am armlets of snakes on both arms. Uh, Bharava uh, um, sits on the coils of a serpent whose head rises above his own. Parvati has snakes around her neck and waist. Vishnu uh, is the preserving spirit. Uh, Mahadeva is Shiva, the evil. 
like the serpents on the two pillars on the Masonic columns. They, they copied Yaquin and Boaz, but they perverted it with their, their sun god, their triune triple deity. And the snake, man. Look at it. Principal Bareva is his son, and Parvati his consort. The king of evil demons was called the Hindu in is called in the Hindu mythology Naga, the king of the serpents, or Nakash. You see, look, which is the name we trace in, in which name we trace the Hebrew Nakash, serpent. So see, what did I tell you, man? I didn't even, I didn't even know. Look at that. I didn't even know that was coming out. I just, I just, you know, you just could tell, you know, Nagas, you know, Naga, Naka. They just, you know, if you know anything about language, uh, um, but that's what it is, man. You know, the demon deity, the sun god Ra. But that's, you know, that's, look at that. That's the serpent, the king of serpents, the, the king of, of divination and witchcraft, you know. All right, Let's see what we got, 161. Let's see. It might be the Kundalini again. Oh, no, it's about Isis. Okay, so here we go. So we were talking about this winged solar disk, right? The winged solar disk was also used by Charles Tace Russell, the founder of the Jehovah Witnesses. I could break them down hard. He wanted the winged disk put on all his covers, which were later removed from his books by Joseph Rutherford. Of course, this is not surprising that Russell used a 33rd degree Masonic symbol since he himself was a Mason. There are also numerous creatures that are winged. Isis, an Egyptian god, is portrayed with wings. So see, this Isis. Then there's the winged serpent or Arias, a symbol of royalty. You know, the winged serpent, the plumed serpent. The serpent was a wisdom symbol, and when plumed, it meant the wisdom had been given wings and had become spirit wisdom or illumination. So see, that's the fiery flying serpents, the, the fiery, the flying, the, the illumination, the spirit wisdom, the Illuminati, man. The Illuminati enchanters, that's what it's saying, the winged serpents. You know? You gotta, you gotta, we gotta start learning how to decipher their talk, man. It's so easy. Uazit, an Egyptian goddess, is also represented by the winged serpent. Another Egyptian goddess, Buto, was symbolized by a winged cobra. She was the protector of Pharaoh. The new, so see, they, and man, I have this, I have this thing, man. I, I, I've been working on something big, Israel. I've been working on something big. Just know that, man. Um, I'm planning on, on, on proving some crazy things. Uh, but anyways, the new LaRousse Encyclopedia of Mythology explains, Budo was a snake goddess, frequently represented in the form of a cobra, sometimes winged and sometimes crowned. She also uh, often has the features of a woman wearing either directly on her head or on a headdress in the form of a vulture, the red crown of the north of which she was the official protectress of Nekabet, was of the white crown of the south, the red and the white crowns, man. It's, ah, man, I got... Closely related to the winged serpent is the winged dragon. The dragon was symbolic importance to many people. However, each person gives different meanings to the dragon. So the dragon is also linked in with this serpent. Oh, uh, man, I have some shit, man. I, I really think Esau's been running shit behind the scenes for a long longer than we think is real man I, I got some shit on it man but anyways uh to some it stands for great wisdom and immortality to others it is a symbol of good fortune still others know the dragon as a powerful benevolent friend uh, dragon the great red dragon is who uh put that i mean uh, your boy uh, hermes trice majestus is said to have gotten his knowledge from man actually the serpent and the dragon are really symbols for satan in connection with the dragon in, in the weavering, it is the creature that is usually represented as a two-legged winged creature resembling a dragon. The pegasus is another winged animal. Quite popular, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, yeah, it just goes on. Let's talk about the pegasus for a minute. Anyways. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay, so here we go. This is the Medusa. Um, 
It says, There were three Gorgons who were sisters, one of whom was Medusa. Poseidon seduced Medusa in the Temple of Athena. She became angry over this and turned Medusa's hair into snakes. Uh, where Perse And it says, When Perseus decapitated Medusa, the blood which escaped from the wound gave birth to Chrysor and the horse Pegasus. So that's where they say Pegasus comes from, is from this the winged uh, serpent god, you know? Uh, Kronos is another god sometimes represented as wings. Look, Kronos, Horus, and Saturn are all considered to be gods of time. Kronos, also spelled Kronos, 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 blah, blah, blah. From which we get the word chronology was the Greek name of Saturn and uh, was the Greek name and Saturn was the Roman name of the same god. See, Masonic writer J.S.M. Ward, in his book Freemasonry and the Ancient Gods, tells us that Saturn is the Satan, the Tempter, or the rather, the Tester. Eliphaz Levi claims they understand, man, that he's the Tempter and the Tester. That he's just the Tester, man. That's that he's the, the evil, the knowledge of the evil and the good to test us. He's Kronos, uh, you know, chronology. See, this is, English language is awful, man. They got us sinning every day because we be speaking God's names every day and don't even know it. All our words are named after God's. Works of malediction and death were under the care of Saturn. It's no wonder then that Saturn is called the Lord of Death. In fact, human sacrifices were even offered to him. So that's your boy Saturn, Jesus, God. Um, Masonic Robert, um, writer Robert McAway reveals that some men believed that Baal was the Saturn of Greece and Rome, and there was a great conformity between the rites and sacrifices offered to Saturn and what the scriptures relate of the sacrifices offered to Baal. So see, it's the same thing. It's the same offering. Whenever it talks about Baal, it's just it's in the scriptures. Baal is just like a, a, you know, not only is it you know talking about the 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 you know Canaanite deity that they were worshiping, but it's also describing all the deities. Blavatsky also confirms that Saturn is Bel or Baal. Additionally, Saturn was known as the god Set. Right? So they're all the same god. You know? Um okay, prostitute of sexual Prostitution and sexual license. Saturnalia. That's your Christmas, man. Yeah. Okay, well we'll get we'll get more about that later on. Uh, let's try to get this out. 190. Let's get page 190. Okay, here we go. The light or the Christ. So see? The light or the Christ. Uh, that the occultists refer to uh, uh, let me get let me see. the angle of the light is kind of bothering. All right, here we go. Yep, is recultus referred to is actually the light of Lucifer, as Eliphaz Levi and Albert Pike have written. Lucifer, the light bearer. Lucifer, the son of the morning. It says Blavatsky boasts that quote Satan or the red fiery dragon, the Lucifer or light bearer is in use or is in us you know that's so that's what they say they are the lucifer they are because he's their angel this this satan is the red fiery dragon he's the he is the serpent and he is inside the lucifer the red fiery lucifer the light bearer they're one in the same man it's just the angel and his and his people our tempter and redeemer their tempter and redeemer, Jesus, our intelligent liberator and savior from pure animalism. So I guess, you know, scriptures is animalism to them. In Blavatsky's book, we also find holy is the Sabbath of God, blessed and sanctified in the name of the angel of Hades, Satan. Yeah. So that's why they have their, you know, their so-called black Sabbaths. Um, let's see. Okay. Alright. We're good on that. I thought let me see. Uh yeah. That's it. Okay, so the next thing we get is three fourteen. Uh there's some more stuff about Kumbi. Like I said you could go get that another time. Okay. Saturn, the astrological representations of Saturn. Another name for Osiris is Saturn. So see Osiris and Saturn are the same which is Satan. 
Masonic writer J.S.M. Ward explains that Saturn is really Satan. A dictionary of symbols mentions that Saturn is related to the Ouroboros, or the serpent which bites its own tail. See, it's all the same. It's all the same. Saturn's symbol is a scythe. The scythe is really a symbolic renewed hopes of rebirth and re or reincarnation. This is quite fitting since the symbolism of the broken column represents Isis and Osiris. Osiris has a rebirth due to spells performed by Isis. So see, that's their spells. They're all about their sorcery. You know, look. Isis is known as the powerful sorceress, the great enchantress, mistress of magic, speaker of spells. That's Nakash, 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 Nakash. You know? That's, that's your goat. Um, let's get 359 now. We're almost done with this book, Israel. Um, let's see. Uh, sorry, sorry. All right. Since all the seeing eye, since the all seeing eye represents Osiris, let's look at who Osiris is. He committed incest with his sister Isis, which resulted in the birth of Horus. Pike says Osiris was the image of the generative power. So see, Osiris, your boy Osiris, had his uh. His, his, uh, his, you know, his scythe, his sister wife, you know. Pike says Osiris was the image of the generative power. He also is the, the Egyptian god of the dead as well as the sun god. Osiris is known by many names in other countries. In Thrace and Greece, he is known as Dionysius, the god of pleasures and of parting and wine. A contrast between this pagan god and the true Christ once again becomes obvious when we look at the Bible. So, you know... They, they, it's actually the same God. They try to say it's different, but not. Nah. See this, see these Christians, uh, they come up and they give you all this good information, but then they're like, oh, but he's different than, than, than Jesus, you know? Nah, bullshit, man. See, this is why only Hebrews, only Torah Hebrews will give you 100% truth. Well, you know, you, we, we try to give you everything, man. We try to give you all of the best things, man. If we're wrong on something, we'll take correction, man. You know, not everybody's going to be right all 100% of the time, man. We may mess up on a few things or whatever, but we, we don't have a problem taking correction. But nine times out of ten, we're going to tell you, you know, we bring you pretty much the truth, man. We bring you facts. We, we don't spin it with no stupid Christ idol. We don't spin it with no nothing. We're not Masons. We speak against them. All this shit, you know? The, the, everyone else is going to fuck shit up, bro. Everyone else is fucking shit up except people that follow the Torah, follow the Most High, because they are for truth and honor and righteousness, and they follow rules, and, and you know, it's what's right, man. It's just what's right. It's just being a, a good person, you know? says, festival held in Dionysius' honor often resulted in human sacrifices and orgiastic sexual rites. In Rome, Osiris is called Liber or Bacchus. The Lydians, Libertas, you know, is your, your Statue of Liberty. The Lydians named him ba, uh, Basarius, and in Persia is he identified with Mithras, where astrology is practiced by his followers. He is the Zagreus of the Cretans and became the underworld divinity. Um, who welcomed the souls of the dead? You know, the Phrygians was known as Osiris. Has Osiris was known as Sabazius, honored as a solar deity, sun god, who was represented by horns, and his emblem was a serpent. In other places, he had other names such as Diosis, the boy Jupiter, Centaur, Orion, Saturn, the boy Plutus, Iswara, the winged one, Shara, uh, uh, you know, uh, Nimrod. Nimrod, Adonai, Hermes, Prometheus, Poseidon, uh, Butes, Dardanus, Himaros, Imbor, Siasis, Zeus, Iacus, Hu, Thor, Bel, Serapis, you know, uh, Sharaf, you know, uh, Ormuz, Apollo, Tammuz, Addis, Hercules, Shiva, Moloch, and believe it or not, Baal. Yeah, you know? it's all the same shit. It's all the same goddamn shit. Um. Uh, let's see, 375 and 376, I think this is the last thing, um, here we go, let's see, not surprisingly, the logo of the Points of Light Foundation is also in of occultic nature, it depicts the golden sun disc with what is at first glance appears to be a torch of light within, but wait, it is not the concealed image of two entities, uh, but wait, 
is it not the concealed image of two entities, a male and a female, facing each other? Occultic philosophers can easily recognize these two as the sun god and his goddess, so they put them everywhere. Of course, the interest in the eye goes back many centuries. Dr. Dennis Coody writes, Both King Henry VII and his granddaughter, Queen Elizabeth I, the Queen of England, 1558-1603, used the phoenix as one of their badges. Queen Elizabeth I, to whom President Bush is related, so see, the, and these are Amalekites, man, these are all Amalekites, was also fascinated by men's eyes. Uh, favored servants of the queen designed their letters to her with symbolic eyes. And John D, this Kabbalist guy, who headed the British Espionage Network, he was a hardcore Kabbalist, Jewish Kabbalist, signed himself 007, uh, which is, you know, that's where you get your boy James Bond and all that stuff. That's where you get with the origination of that. It's John D, man. James Bond, that's John D. He's a Kabbalist. D, an acquaintance of the Queen's husband, the Earl of Leicester, was an alchemist, astrologer, psychic, and spy. According to the Mind Wars, 1984, by Ron McRae, former associate of the col of columnist Jack Anderson, the basis for his 007 signature was each zero representing an eye and the seven being the sum of two eyes, four other senses, and last, mystical knowledge from the nine spirits, or muses who spoke through D's crystal ball, the shoe stone. So, it's, you know, this is all witchcraft, man. D credited the Nine and his showstone with uncovering a Spanish plot to burn the forest and provided wood for English shipbuilding. Whatever the source, the plot was real. Had it succeeded, the Spanish Armada might have sailed unopposed in 1588. So see, in the eye of Queen Elizabeth's garment is described in detail, we are told, quote, The sumptuous robe of Elizabeth I is embroidered with a remarkable serpent upon the sleeve and a deft scattering of eyes and ears elsewhere, no doubt to signify that nothing escapes the attention of the Virgin Queen, our English Diana. See, look at that. On her sleeve was the serpent. See? See it? It's the serpent, man. These are all serpent people. They're all damn fucking devils, man. Alright, uh, that's, that's done with that book. Um, the last book we have is The Secret Teachings of All Ages. We have just a few things... Uh, to pull out of there. Um, we're almost done. Secret Teachings of All Ages. You know what it is. Manly P. Hall. Um, let's go to page 62. See what we got. Um, ah, page 62. Uh, okay, here we go. So this is about Serapis. So it is also quite probable that Serapis was worshipped in the form of a serpent. So see, the Serapis is, you know, same thing as Osiris. All them motherfuckers are the same. Serapis, the serpent, in common with many of the higher deities of the Egyptian and Greek pantheon. So see, they were all worshipped in the form of a serpent when you get down to it, which is just a fucking penis. Serapis was called Theon Heptagrammaton, or the god with the name of seven letters. The name Serapis, like Abraxas and Mithras, contains seven letters, right? In their hymns to Serapis, the priest chanted seven vows. Occasionally, Serapis is depicted with horns of a, uh, or a coronet of seven rays, which is like the Statue of Liberty has, and, and Libertas and all these gods, the, the um, you know, the, the, which have the rays, the sun rays protruding. And the horns, which represent the the Ashatara uh, Quaronyam, the Ashtaroth Karnayam, you know, that evidently represented the seven divine intelligences manifesting through the solar light, which is just the seven. They they worship the seven, the five, uh, the two, the sun and the moon and the five wandering stars. They call them. Um, it says. The Encyclopedia Britannica notes that the earliest authentic mention of Serapis is in connection with the death of Alexander. Ooh. Such was the prestige of Serapis that he alone of the gods was consulted in behalf of the dying king. So, you know, because Alexander, their god man, their god king was dying, they went to their highest god, Serapis. The Egyptian secret school of philosophy was divided into the lesser and the greater mysteries. So what the fuck? How come these damn Kemets aren't talking about the greater and lesser mysteries? That the difference is and all that shit. See, they're, you know, they they don't know what the fuck they're talking about and they're masons on top of that. So it's, it's just fucking stupid. 
the former being sacred to Isis and the latter to Serapis and Osiris. So see, the lesser mysteries, they worship Isis. That's that, oh, the black black woman is queen, brother. He's the, she's the fucking god. No, 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 kiss my ass, man. Bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Look at that. They, that's the lesser mysteries they're giving you. The greater mysteries, they worship Serapis or Osiris. They worship the goddamn fucking penis, the, the dildo, you know? So here we go. A limited number were admitted into the greater mysteries. These preserved their secrets inviolate. So see, they, they even if they were a part of the greater mysteries, uh, they preserved their secrets, man. They won't, they're not going to tell you anything. It says, much of the information concerning the rituals of the higher degrees of the Egyptian mysteries have been gleaned from an examination of the chambers and passageways in the initiate uh, where in which the initiations were given. So see, that's what all these things are. These these hieroglyphics and shit, they're nothing but the initiations. That's why they only show you the same notice, they only show you the same damn hieroglyphics, the same like three of them over and over and over. That's why they can't go to the other ones because they show you all the initiations. Under the temple of the Serapis, destroyed by Theodosius, were found strange mechanical contrivances constructed by the priests in the subterranean crypts and caverns where the nocturnal initiatory rites were celebrated. So they found all these kinds of crazy, like, inventions, man. These, these crazy machines um, down in the, in the chambers, man. These, these dudes were doing shit underground in, like, the catacombs and shit. It says, these machines indicate that the severe tests of the moral and physical courage undergone by the candidates. So they were torturing people with these things, man. After passing through these torturous, uh, see, torturous ways, the neophytes who survived the ordeals were ushered, who survived the ordeals. So, you know, that means niggas be dying. Uh, who survived the ordeals were ushered in to the presence of Serapis, the noble and awe-aspiring figure illumined by unseen lights. So that, and you know, they just go and worship their, their Edomite, you know, god, their man god. Uh, but, you know, you know what it is. They, they worship Lucifer when it comes down, I mean Satan when it comes down to it. Everyone worships Lucifer, who is, you know, your boy Jesus. And they worship, um, uh, uh, they worship Satan. So it says right here, look. Labyrinths were also a striking feature in connection with the rite of Serapis. E.A. Wallace Budge, in his Gods of the Egyptians, depicts Serapis, minotaur-like, with the body of a man and the head of a bull. Labyrinths were symbolic of the inv involvements and illusions of the lower world through which the wanderers of the soul of man in its search for truth. So the labyrinth is basically just your so-called Kabbalistic tree of life or whatever. The journey that they take. See, we we go through the wilderness in our minds, you know. You know what it is. The the, the, the three levels of the temple, the wisdom, the, the temple man. They go through their labyrinths. It says, it says the maze of worldly ignorance. See? It says, in this relation, Serapis becomes the trier or the adversary which is Satan, who tests the souls of those seeking union with the immortals. The maze was also doubtless used to represent the solar system, the bull man representing the sun dwelling in the mystic maze of its planets, moons, and asteroids, which is all bullshit. That's all modern day cosmology is nothing but sun worship. Uh, the Gnostic mysteries were acquainted with the arcane meaning of Serapis. And through the medium of Gnosticism, this god became inextricably associated with the early Christianity. In fact, so see, this is, you know, early Christianity. In fact, the Emperor Hadrian, while traveling in Egypt in AD 134, declared the letter to Servianus that the worshippers of Serapis were Christians and that the bishops of the church also worshipped at his shrine. He even declared that the patriarch himself, when in Egypt, was forced to adore Serapis as well as Christ. See Parsons' new light on the Great Pyramid. So see, they were it was one and the same, man. They, the Christians were just uh, Serapis people, man. They're, they were Serapians, you know? They worshipped Serapis. They combined him. They worshipped, they made everyone adore Serapis as well as Christ. It's like, it's like in Islam now, you know? Islam, they... Um, they say, you know, oh, Jesus was a prophet and stuff, and they, they adore Jesus, but they also adore the prophet Muhammad, man. You know, they say that they're both coming back for people. Um, let's see. 
Serapis gradually usurped the position previously occupied by the other Egyptian and Greek gods and became the supreme deity of both religions. His power continued until the 4th century of the Christian era, which is, you know, in, in the Council of Nicaea. In AD 385, Theos, uh, Theodosius, that, that would-be exterminator of pagan philosophy, issued his memorial edict. Uh, you know, where Christian, when the Christian soldiers in disobedience to his order entered the Serapium in Alexandria to destroy the image of Serapis. So basically they just replaced um, Serapis with Jesus, man. That was the transition. That's what Paul did. They basically transitioned the worship of Serapis with the worship of Jesus, you know. It says, Socrates, a church historian uh, of the 5th century, declared that after the pious Christians had raised the Ser Serapium at Alexandria and scattered the demons who dwelt under the guise of gods, beneath the foundation was found the monogram of Christ. So see, they were worshipping Christ. They, it's this Because it's the same deity, man. They were worshipping the Ser Serapis, and then they created this Christ God, and when they went and destroyed the Serapium, where they worshipped Serapis, they found the same shit that they were worshipping Christ with, man. The mysteries of Serapis. You know? Mysteries of Serapis. This is what this shit is, man. They, you know. Um, let's see. It says Albert Pike, right? Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma three says uh, Martanius uh, Capella in his hymn to the sun. Dwellers on the Nile adore as Serapis. And Memphis, Memphis worships as Osiris. In the sacred rites of Persia, thou art Mithras. In Fergia Addis, the Libya bows down to these as Ammon, and the Phoenician Byblos as Adon, Adonai or Adonis. Thus, the whole world adores three under different names. So, see, this it's that Trinity, man. It doesn't matter what name you call it. It's still that Trinity. It's still that same God. You know. It's still that same shit. It's, it's, you know, can't get away from it. I'm sorry, but you can't get away from it. Um, let's see, 146. It's Torah versus everybody. It literally is, man. Judah Naz has it perfectly. It's Torah versus everybody. Look at this. It says, serpents, because they lived in the earth, were associated with the spirit of darkness. So see, this is what they try to see, you know, say, oh, spirits, are, you know, uh, spirit of darkness because they dwell in the earth. You know, this is why it says the serpents that they, they eat the dust, you know, they dwell in the earth. They, they're earthly. They're, they, they dwell in Egypt, you know. They dwell in that darkness, that covering, remember? We were breaking down the Hebrew, that spirit of darkness. Um, let's see. Let's go to 140. Oh, wait, hold on. Um... Let's see. Uh, hold on. Try to see what else was on here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hopefully, I wasn't covering that. Um, hold on. No, I guess that was it for now. Um, hold on. Winged serpents. I think I'm trying to like. I think I missed something, no. but I can't find nothing on here. Okay, yeah, I must have just missed uh, did that. Let's go to page 243. All right, let's go to page 243. What's up, buddy? Sorry, that's my son. Goes crazy. Okay, here we go. Um... So just bear with. Um, it says that part of the body of the kidneys downward was termed by the early Kabbalists as the land of Egypt. So see, they took our whole, you know, the lower self where your feet are. You know, if you were to take out the temple man where the feet is um, and the legs, you know, the are the pillars. Um, that's the lower Egypt. Well, they say from the kidneys downward was termed the land of Egypt into which the children of Israel were taken during the captivity. Out of Egypt, Moses, the illuminated mind, and his name, as his name applies, led the tribes of Israel, the tw twelve faculties, by raising the brazen serpent in the wilderness upon the symbol of the Tau cross. Not only Kyram, but the godmen of nearly every pagan mystery ritual are personifications of the spirit fire, 
the kundalini in the human spinal cord so see that this is the spirit fire that that penis that 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 semen god you know raising the brazen serpent that's what that was all oh, that's what moses did that for see they they have their own little interpretation of it but really what it was is that moses you know we know what it was i broke it down that he was raising that christ god to comfort the people but they take it as moses you know just being a part of the mysteries and he was just doing nothing but the spirit fire crap you know but they know what it is how come they know so much of our mysteries man all they do is just uh copy them you know all they do is just uh, copy our mysteries, uh, you know, the true mysteries, I guess you could say, uh, and they pervert it with their witchcraft, you know. Um, let's see. Let's go to 272. We're almost done, Israel. Just bear with a little bit. Um, uh, let's see. The serpent. The serpent was chosen as the head of the reptilian family. Serpent worship in some form has permeated in nearly all parts of the earth. So see, it's the head of the reptilian family, these reptilians and greys, right? In the ancient mysteries, the serpent entwining a staff was the symbol of the position. The serpent wound, uh, the serpent wound staff of Hermes remains the emblem of the medical profession. Among nearly all the ancient peoples, the serpent was accepted as the symbol of wisdom or salvation. This is why Moses raised up this wisdom serpent salvation so that it would be destroyed just like everything else. We always sacrifice and we destroy all these idols. It says the, antip the antipathy of which Christendom feels towards the, the snake is based upon the little understood allegory of the Garden of Eden. So they try to say Christian, but Christendom just worships the snake too. So, you know, Manly P. Hall is trying to throw you off right there. The serpent is true to the principle of wisdom. So see, they say the serpent is wisdom. For it tempts man to the knowledge of himself. So see, that's what they say. that That's the tempter. That he tempts you to the knowledge of yourself. Therefore, the knowledge of self resulted from Nan's disobedience to the Demirgus Jehovah. So that's what they call uh, the Most High. They call him Jehovah and Demirgus. They try to throw you off. But they basically, that's what they say. Is that he was in opposition. He teaches you of yourself and uh, knowledge of self-understanding, uh, you know. But that, that's disobedience. See? The tree that grows in the midst of the garden is the spiritual fire. The knowledge of the use of that spinal fire is the gift of the great serpent. So that's the gift of the great serpent. Was he taught you how to use the spinal fire or how to take semen in your butthole. Notwithstanding statements to the contrary, the serpent is the symbol and the prototype of the universal savior. So see, he is the universal savior. Who redeems the world by giving creation the knowledge of itself and the realization of good and evil. So that's their Satan. If this be not so, why did Moses raise a brazen serpent upon a cross in the wilderness that all who looked upon it might be saved from the sting of the lesser snakes? Was not this brazen serpent a prophecy of the crucified man to come? If the serpent be only a thing of evil, why did Christ instruct his disciples to be wise as serpents? So see, man, this is what the New Testament allows the Masons to do. The New Testament allows the Masons to twist the scriptures because of this stupid Christ shit. You know what I mean? But look, it, it wasn't because of the universal savior or the man or whatever. No, Moses raised the brazen serpent in the wilderness to show that our people were fucking stupid and they must be comforted with idols that they that they will not pay attention even when they were told when they're tested, they still don't pay attention and they fail that test. That's what that was for. Then they come over here and talk about, oh, well, Christ said to be wise as serpents, man, so it has to be that, you know? No, bullshit. Christ was that New Testament Christ shit's bullshit. See, look at look at how they spun everything. Look at how these masons for fucking little shysters, man. You know? Look at The accepted theory that the serpent is evil cannot be substantiated. So see, these evil bastards say that, oh, well, the serpent isn't evil. You can't prove it. Well, well, Torah proves it. It has long been viewed as the emblem of immortality. It is the symbol of reincarnation or meta, uh, metempsychosis. Because it annually sheds its skin, uh, reappearing, as it were, in a new body. There is an ancient superstition to the effect that snakes never die except by violence and that if, in if uninjured, they would live forever. 
It was also believed that the snakes swallowed themselves, and this resulted in their being considered emblematic of the Supreme Creator, who periodically reabsorbed his universe back into himself. So this is all bullshit, man. All nonsense. This is what they try to tell you, but nah, it's just the fucking worshipping Esau and his angel Satan, and they're just dicks. Nothing but dicks, literally. In Isis Unveiled, HP, another good book, H.P. Blavatsky makes his significant or makes this significant statement concerning the origin of the serpent worship. Quote, before our globe had become egg shaped or round, it was a long trail of cosmic dust or fire mist moving and writhing like a serpent. This say uh, this say the explanations was the spirit of God moving on the chaos until it br its breath had in incubated cosmic matter and made it assume the annular shape of a serpent with its tail in its mouth emblem of eternity in its spiritual and of our world in its physical sense so see they, they're trying to pervert the most high's creation the seven-headed snake represents the supreme deity manifesting through his elohim or seven spirits by whose aid he establishes his universe the coils of the snake have been used by the pagans to symbolize the motion and also the orbits of the celestial bodies see that it's it's uh uh the the host of heaven worship and it is probable that the symbol of the serpent twisted around the egg, which was common to many of the ancient mystery schools, represented both the apparent motion of the sun around the earth. See? I got some shit on that. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so sorry, Israel. Oh, I'm having an allergy attack right now. Bear with me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, so, see, the sun around the earth, that's the real shit. I, I got some shit on that, man. And the bands of astral light and the great magical agent which move about the planet in, in incessantly. Electricity was commonly symbolized by the serpent because of its motion. So see, that's where you get the lightning um, being the phallic symbol of the god. Force projected through atmosphere was called the great snake. Being symbolic of universal force, the serpent was emblematic of both good and evil. The serpent with its tail in its mouth is the symbolic of... A symbol of eternity for in his position of the body of the reptile has neither beginning nor end the initiates of the mysteries were often referred to as serpents and their wisdom was considered an analogs to the divinely inspired uh, inspired power of the snake there is no doubt that the title winged serpents the sheriffim or sharafyam was given to one of the invisible hierarchies that labored with the earth during its early formation so you know, they're trying to say that basically they created the earth. They're trying to take the actual Sharfyam that the Most High has, those creatures that he created, and they stole that idea and they're like, oh, we're the winged serpent and we're the man and we're, we're the crassified god and we're the... They, they, they just stole everything and perverted it and made it into a bunch of bullshit. And we got to take this shit back, man. There is a legend that it... That is in the beginning of the world, winged serpents reigned upon the earth. There were probably the demigods which antedate the historical civilization of every nation. This is your whole reptilians and aliens shit. This is all that fucking nonsense, man. These winged serpents reigned upon the earth, blah, blah, blah. No, those are just creatures that the Most High created and they took them and created this fanciful thing just like they do with everything else. Um... A point that must not be overlooked in connection with reptiles in symbolism is clearly brought out by the eminent scholar Dr. A. H. E. Santee in his Anatomy of the Brain and Spinal Cord. In, rep 